So welcome everybody to this TechSoup hosted webinar. Today we're going to be talking about how to use Asana for everything except project management. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. I'm so excited you were here today. For those of you who this is your first time here with us at TechSoup, here's how you can engage. We would love for you to put your questions in the Q&A. People have already been putting them in the chat, but we'd love for you to put them in the Q&A so we can answer them at the end of this webinar. We will email you this video replay and a way to contact our speakers. Uh, there's going to be a survey that's going to pop up at the end of your uh, session. If you have to leave early, it'll pop up. Just two questions. So if you would take the time to answer that, we'd love to know what you'd like to hear more about Asana. And if you need the closed caption, just tap on the CC button at the bottom of your screen. I'm going to move out the way and turn this over to our speakers today. Uh, we have Bobby Staten III. Bob, he's a chief of clarity. And Raymond Lewis, he's a senior architect at Bobby Staten and Company. Welcome, Bobby and Raymond. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Aretha. I really appreciate it. Um, we're excited to be here um, and share just a little more about what capabilities Asana has. You know, um, we've had the pleasure of partnering with TechSoup over the last almost two years now, and we've gotten so many insights from partnering and working directly with uh, so many different nonprofit organizations across the country. Um, and we've been able to take those insights and then really revisit and, and tweak how we approach serving those organizations. So we're really excited about what we're going to share with you all today. Uh, so let me give you a little bit more insight into what we will cover. All right. So agenda, uh, we'll start with a, a really brief uh, introduction and company overview just to kind of give you all some insight into who we are and what we're about. Um, I will walk you guys through uh, what I call the journey to nowhere. It's a, a very familiar place that I'm sure once we get into it, Many of you will be able to identify with it as well. Um, I will provide a, a brief overview of Asana architecture. Uh, for those who do not play in the tech space, that's essentially what the fields in the tool mean, right? What is the infrastructure that Asana leverages uh, to do what it does so well? And then I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Raymond, who's going to walk us through a demonstration of four use cases that I think will be very eye-opening for those who are on the call. And then we'll wrap up today's webinar with a little bit of Q&A. Uh, we'll do our best to answer your questions live. Um, and those that we can get to, we'll provide contact information for follow-up as you all deem appropriate. All right. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so this is our starting lineup. You know, I, I don't have a starting five yet, but I, I would venture to say that my starting four could compete with with some of anyone. Um, as Aretha so eloquently stated, my name is Bobby Staten III. I am the Chief of Clarity here at Staten & Co. Um, and I'm happy to be here and share with you guys from an experience perspective. Um, I have over 20 years of project management experience. Um, 12 of those years has been rooted deeply in IT. So working with the Asana Setup Service has really kind of been great for me to bridge the gap between my technical expertise as well as my business operations and strategy expertise as well. I would love to hand it over to Raymond to introduce himself, and then I'll tell you about the rest of the team. As Bobby said, your, your senior architect, one of my greatest functions and pleasures is getting to, to explore my introvert heaven, which is behind the scenes and allows me to, um, to build and work with our, our clients that we have opportunity to, to build and work with to help establish new processes, um, venture into all the uncharted spaces of Asana and dig and find new ways to accomplish some of our, uh, our greatest achievements or achieve some of the goals that help all of us companies do business better. I love it. Thank you, Raymond. Um, uh, sorry, is there a delay on your end as well? We'll keep it moving. Other two team members that are not present today, Monique Wilson is our customer success manager and Cameron Peters is our project coordinator. He's more than likely anybody who has used uh, our service or has expressed interest has probably heard from him as he is essential to our process, our fulfillment process. He is the project coordinator and likely your first point of contact. Um, if I may, for just a second, I'm going to switch my network uh, so that I can jump back in with you all and get this glitch resolved. All right. Well, there you go. Glitch all right. resolved. <laughs> all right. So quick company overview. So our mission is very straightforward. We're here. We're all about transformation, right? We're looking to transform growing businesses 
into thriving enterprises. And we do that through strategy, system implementation, and managed services. So here at the bottom, uh, there are three verticals of our business that we like to focus on. Uh, business coaching, uh, business consulting, and learning and development. There are a variety of different services that are interwoven um, into those three uh, focus areas. But that's a little bit about what we do. Um, and we, Over the last eight years, you've had the pleasure of partnering with uh, small and medium businesses as well as nonprofits um, across several different industries. And so um, I look forward to sharing some of what we've learned uh, through those engagements with you all today. So let's talk a little bit about the journey to nowhere, right? I can't speak for everyone on the call, but I I think it's safe to say, at least for me, one of my toxic traits as a lifelong learner is going to the library and getting a ton of books that sound really, really cool that I know I don't have the time to read. We all know how this story goes, right? The books expire. They end up drifting to a place that's out of sight, you know, out of sight, out of mind. I start getting nasty grams from the library about late fees. The books are found and returned unread. Does that sound familiar to anyone? If so, just drop a 100 or an okay in the chat. <laughs> I need the comfort in this moment, okay? Don't worry, this is a safe space. But I bring up this example because it reflects some of the same patterns that we've seen with some of our Asana clients so far. Put into their tech stack. There's four primary things that we're hearing from our customers. First and foremost is management, right? How do we get a universal tool that allows us to track project and or program status through to completion? The other one that we hear a lot is organization, right? We need a centralized place to store and share critical information that's essential either to our programs or to our teams. Uh, to that end, visibility is also another really high uh, value proposition, if you will, where folks are looking for a line of sight to information that matters without having to dig through your inbox. I'm sure like if you all are anything like us, you all are likely inundated with emails all day, every day. So trying to go back a month ago and find out what Susie said about the program update from the last time you all met might be a little challenging. And so is there an opportunity to extract some of that information out of our inboxes and put it in a place that not only provides easy access, but visibility across the team? Doing so then obviously leans into what we love to talk about, efficiency, right? How do we leverage technology to do more with less, which I believe will be critical, especially with our nonprofit folks. And so I'm sure you know where I'm going with this, right? We buy the thing, it scratches the surface or scratches an itch that we thought it had, might have. And then we rack up this bill. Worst case scenario, the tool sits on the shelf, much like the library books. And in some cases, it never gets used, right? The problems persist. And then the next thing we know, we're lullabying ourselves right back into our old ways of working. Sound familiar? Again, don't, don't believe me. Let's take a look at the data, all right? We took some, some survey responses, if you will, from the Asana clients that we've had the pleasure of serving. And this pie chart is a quick look at some of the responses that we received from every client that we've served so far since we began partnering with TechSoup. To kind of distill this a bit, you can see here 50% of those who signed up for the setup service were new to Asana. Approximately 45% had had Asana for some time, but the usage wasn't optimal. And then we have 5% who were what we call shelf sitters, right? They paid for the license, got the tool, and never used it. So we decided to do something about this, right? We put our consultant and engineer hats on and begin identifying use cases that spoke directly to the needs of these organizations and really finding new ways to flip the Asana architecture on its head. I see that the slides are still glitching a little bit. I'm sorry for this, folks. But just I, read if you can, Bobby, if you'll read what those colors are again and what those yeah. percentages are. Thank you. I definitely will. So the blue on the right hand side, that 50 percent, that represents the percentage of users who are new or relatively new to Asana, never used it before. The gold is about 45 percent. And that represents the group that has had Asana for some time, but usage wasn't optimal. The smallest sliver, the red sliver that's at the bottom there represents what we call shelf sitters. So our shelf sitters are those who pay for the license, bought the tool because whatever the purpose was, oh, I'm tired of looking through my inbox, let's just get something, and then never did anything with it, right? 
And so that's why we're here, right? When we think about what next steps look like for us, the, the main reason why we're here is number one, we're not gatekeepers, right? We want to make sure that everyone gets a taste of this secret sauce. Our Part of our mission, when we think about transformation, is also about transforming the journey to nowhere to the journey to vision, right? When we think about what vision means to many of your organizations, it's that destination that so many of your organizations are pursuing by way of your mission. So what we've done for today's webinar, we pulled together some really cool use cases for ways that we believe our Asana users can maximize uses of the tool to do one or many of four things, improve donor relations, accelerate fundraising efforts, increase staff retention, and ensure business continuity. But before we get into the use cases, let's talk a little bit about architecture. I talk through in the Asana architecture. The first of those is portfolio, which is a group of related or distinct projects tied to a specific outcome. If you take that one level lower, there's projects, right? So if you can see at the top of the screenshot in this slide, upper left-hand corner, you'll see HR offboarding. That is where the project is defined. And what the way that we define a project is, it's a series of tasks adhering to a timeline with dedicated resources that direct toward a desired outcome. Sections are ways that we can group tasks, right? So if you look just a little bit lower than the project title, you'll see a scope validation. It's probably cut off in your, your view, but that is essentially the header, if you will, for a series of tasks that are specific to a phase of the project. The task is what we like to call a basic unit of measure in the project world. So a task is literally a specific instruction or step that advances the project forward. Underneath tasks, the lowest level, if you will, within the architecture is subtasks or are subtasks. And subtasks take a more granular look at the task at hand, breaking up the overarching task into simple, actionable steps. So the reason I wanted to give you guys that insight is because the reality is here, we can't judge a book by its cover. We're all familiar with the old adage and we've heard it a million times. The way that that applies to Asana is that I want you guys to remember as we walk through these use cases, Asana is a dynamic data structure, meaning that all of the elements of the structure can be adapted. So everything that we just talked about on the previous slide, portfolios, projects, tasks, sections, subtasks, all of those elements can be used and adapted to meet the specific needs of your organization. It just takes a little bit of creativity and that's precisely what we've done. So without any further ado, I am going to stop my uh, fragmented sharing and turn it over to, to Raymond uh, to walk through the demonstration. And hopefully what I can do if mine does not succumb to the same gremlins is I'll hopefully be able to uh, to point out some of the questions, answer some of the questions that you guys asked about in the in the chat with regard to not being able to see. So if I am sharing well, give me a thumbs up, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. So hopefully you can see this. Now I'll do a quick a quick walkthrough to repeat what Bobby uh, was showing. It says uh, he mentioned projects, tasks, sections, and subtasks. And so I'll briefly go through that before uh, I kind of dive into these uh, four use cases that we talked about. So as Bobby mentioned at the very top, this is actually the same. I went to the same project that he had displayed on the screen before. This is our HR offboarding task. And so this is a task that comes when it comes to uh, standard processes or your procedures within an organization. This one would allow a company to allow uh, an employee to go ahead and move along with their life <laughs> and go through some of the different processes and tasks that they have to do when it comes to uh, returning assets, getting key cards, uh, exit interviews, things of that nature. So as we were talking about the structure, here across the top is where you would find the project or the project name. There are also project details that you can uh, observe for, for this particular project. The sections 
of tasks. The tasks are all individual here within the um, within the list view of this project, but all of these individual tasks here can be brought within certain sections. That allows for easier navigation or organization. Uh, they can be collapsed down so that you can see, see the entire process in just its sections and then expand yourself back down into some of the details of tasks that you may be looking for. In addition, what Bobby mentioned as well is that you can see with this icon here, uh, the ability to have subtasks. So within a task, sometimes we have um, many processes or things that in order to accomplish a high level task may take multiple things that have to be accomplished in order for that high level task to be satisfied. And so in that case, similar to the sections and the tasks, this individual task can be expanded to show its subtasks which are functionally just another task within a task or a nested task. So hopefully I, I was able to kind of point out to you guys all those pieces that were a little bit fragmented on that uh, introductory slide. So the piece I want to talk to you guys about is how we end up partnering with individuals to, to help uh, expand their usage of Asana. Uh, for most of the organizations that are, are partnering with TechSoup, we find that, that to a large degree, these are uh, smaller organizations, right, uh, as compared to larger corporations. And one of the things that we found for our nonprofits, our small businesses, or even our medium businesses, is that one of the most valuable things are resources. And the goal is to maximize those resources, meaning that we don't always have an overabundance of money. We don't always have an overabundance of people. We don't always have an overabundance of software even, right? So some of those programmatic resources. And so the goal is to maximize them. And anyone that spent time with Asana can see the power of Asana, but harnessing the power of Asana is not always the most simple or the most straightforward. Right. So what we wanted to look at quickly, and I'll hopefully not take up all of our times, I want to get to some of this Q&A with you all, are a couple of different um, solutions, right? Solutions to resource problems, or as we like to put it, resource maximization. <laughs> so, um, and if I ask probably, and I, I would love to see it from you guys in the chat, when it comes to, you know, resources, what is the most valuable resource to your organization? And you can just, you know, throw it in the chat if it's people, if it's uh, time, if it's money, if it's whatever, right? Go ahead and throw those out there. And I will share with you the one that, that we find to be common across the board. First off, top number one, A1, is always the financial resources, right? And how do we maximize and leverage every opportunity we have to bring in those type of resources so that we can execute our mission? Um, so one of the things that we've, we've developed because of this to help uh, manage when it comes to uh, grants or other entitlements are often the most uh, common. The, the biggest challenge that people experience is I could always put together a, a calendar, right? You know, um, Sana has a calendar view where I can put a date on a calendar and say, don't forget to, to, to uh, submit this application. But a lot of times there are much more details and, and nuance to um, managing a, a series of applications for a particular project and knowing what resources can be allocated to a certain um, uh, objective or a certain uh, criteria based on where you receive that money from. So one of the pieces that I'll bring up to you guys is a grant management calendar as an example, right? So one of the default views for Asana is the list view. And what we've done is we've looked at bringing every um, opportunity for a grant in as a particular task. And one of the default aspects of a task in Asana is having the ability to bring in a due date. So yes, the most basic function is a task. Go get out this, you know, this first bag of money from this um, grant opportunity on a certain date, right? But with every opportunity for, for a grant, there's an application. There's not only a deadline, but there's a contact person. There's an amount that you're um, able to request. Hopefully there's an amount that you're rewarded. Uh, all those pieces that, that tie in can be added as fields. And that's what you see we've done with this calendar, right? Um, 
What is the requested amount? How much was awarded? And one of the most important ones, if you do succeed with receiving this uh, grant, is when can I apply again, <laughs> right? Those are some of the pieces that um, when you adapt this into the calendar, you not only have uh, the, the calendar piece with the dates and the deadlines, but you're also managing the entire database of opportunities. You maintain a log of those opportunities and have a, a chance to um, not only put those back into your annual cycle, but as you can see, we've leveraged the sections here to, to allocate those funds to know if this grant is received, it has to be utilized for this section of the, the annual mission, right? This goal or objective that we're seeking to achieve this year. Um, and those are some of the, the, the different aspects that you can tie into or layer on top of that basic functionality of just having a calendar. Uh, one of the, uh, I'll tie this piece in, I, I took a couple of notes, I saw some very interesting comments on things that, that people were interested in. One of them was forms, right? And so I'll touch on forms as a, as a uh, outgrowth of this uh, project, but also of the next project. So the, I would say, <laughs> when it comes to the, the second greatest valuable resource to our organizations, if it's not money, and this is arguable, right, depending on how your, your organization functions, if it's not money, it's people, right? And so the, the, one of the greatest challenges we've had when it comes to leveraging software is how do I keep track of donors? How do I keep track of, of external partners? People who we, you know, we we partner with to help grow in our funnels of, of our potential um, beneficiaries, our potential targets. How do we work together to reach our a broader community? So a lot of times we're looking to maintain and keep uh, contact with a lot of people. <laughs> and that's not always easy to manage. And having a software uh, to do that, there are plenty of softwares out there. Right, but having to purchase another license for another piece of uh, another piece of software is oftentimes prohibited. So the second piece that we've looked at was utilizing Asana to build a CRM, and so it's not the typical use case for a project management software. But again, this is how to use Asana for more than just project management. So one of the pieces I'll show you here is a very simple um, contact database. And it starts out with just having a project called uh, Contacts, and we're leveraging the task as an individual person. And so I gave a, a quick example for uh, myself and for Bobby, right? And within this, this uh, task, you have basic information, right? An email address, a direct phone number, if anybody's still communicating by phone and not electronically. <laughs> there are also a title, any role, and this is specific to the individual. And so one of the pieces here is that this contact or this, this individual, all the individuals in your virtual Rolodex can exist within this contacts uh, project. But what ties us in and makes it a little more leverageable is if you're potentially um, wanting to organize your contacts with their associated businesses or more, more um, versatilely is if you're using that as a lead funnel, for instance, if you have opportunities or uh, uh, chances to grow new business or um, close on new projects is what I would say. And so what we've leveraged here in addition to that is our lead funnel project. And what you'll see here in the lead funnel is that every opportunity can be listed as a project, as a, as a task itself. And so our lead funnel has the company as the opportunity, as the project. And what we've done is created subtasks for this project with each contact. And so any contact that is added can be added in the contact project simply by creating a new contact, which we've prov uh, provided a template for. And that new contact, we could just put in is Peter's Cameron, right? He doesn't have a gold medal next to his name or an apple next like Bobby, but we'll get him some piece of flair that kind of suits his identity. Um, and we would enter his email address, his role, his direct phone number, and so simply add him as converting his uh, contact as a subtask. And that would allow us to choose 
the organization with which he should be a subtask. And now he is a part of the Bobby Staten and Co. organization. If I go back to that organization, it's not only going to, um, he's not only going to have his contact information available, but he will also inherit all the company contact information, the address, the website, uh, all the pieces that we can tag and decide, how does this uh, organization next move through our, our funnel or our leads? And so I'll go back to that lead section and kind of point that out quickly. So we've leveraged the sections within this lead funnel, uh, which, which I'll show you in the, the board view as well. But our process for um, closing on a contact starts with reaching out to them, qualifying them as a lead, uh, potentially sending out a proposal for them. Once that RFP is submitted, hopefully we can schedule a meeting with that individual, get them on a contract, and, and do some sort of discovery or demonstration with them to show uh, a proof of concept for what they've, you know, they brought us on to do. And so typically we're looking at projects in the list view, but oftentimes leveraging the calendar or the board view can also be helpful or useful. From the board view, we're able to more easily move a client or a, pro a prospect through our process. And it becomes very visible amongst other companies or other contacts where this, this uh, organization is within our, our funnel, our process. And we can simply move them along but I also saw in the in the um, in the conversation one of the, the questions was how do we leverage automations, right? And so one of the details I'll point out to you without going too long in this section is that we have a function that we can do called tunnels, and we call them tunnels at least. And with the tunnels, I can create rules. This simply can be a, a single select dropdown that says, how do I move this? I would like to move this client. They've progressed and now they've gone from um, uh, being contacted to having an RFP submitted. If I set up my automations, I can choose this uh, single select dropdown to activate a rule that once this uh, once this task has this setting for this detail, it will move this con uh, this company from the contacted section to the qualified section. And that, if I can move this window here, is accomplished in the customization of rules. And so depending on your access level, you have the ability to activate any of these type of rules. And one I just mentioned, you'll see here at the top, is, is uh, moving a task to a different section based on a certain, uh, a certain property. And so I'll go back here. And move on, right? So that is one of the ways that we've adapted this to help manage our, our human resources. And another one of the pieces that we talk about from an organizational standpoint, call it a pain point even, um, is that the lack of, of, of human resource sustainability. So that can look like turnover within an organization, or simply we want to sustain our processes. Uh, how do we share accountability within the, the few people that we have? Maybe more than one person has the, uh, the, the, the requirements of achieving or uh, fulfilling a particular accountability within the organization, but we want that done with consistency. So that in most in most organization means we need some best practices or we need some some standard operating procedures or SOPs. <laughs> and so when you think about Asana, again, Asana is I, I sometimes call it the, the glorified clipboard. You know, you've got a clipboard with a bunch of tasks that you can check off as tasks. Um, and as you can see in what we've talked about thus far, yes, we've leveraged the task, but at no point have we um, used it for its clipboardness where we can check off any of these tasks as complete. Of course, that's an option, but how do we do more with Asana? So the piece that I want to point out to you guys here is we've leveraged an entire team section to organize uh, processes as projects. And we, we've called it our company handbook, right? Or our SOP uh, repository. And so if I bring you to this company, you'll see that we have a couple, uh, four different projects here. And I'll just kind of highlight a couple of them. The first one we talked about at the very beginning was our HR, HR offboarding. 
And again, that simply allows us to bring into a project a, a process, and that process has sections. The first thing, or, or the or organizationally, the identification piece of the processes or tasks that we need to accomplish when offboarding an employee. Um, going down into the scope validation, into the scope implementation, uh, things that could be IT related uh, or uh, cheese and access related, right? All these things now are looking like your, your uh, checkoffs, right? So once these things are done, they can be assigned to an individual, pre-assigned to an individual, given a date or time, any additional properties that um, uh, allow us to maximize this beyond just having a booklet that has a, a, a order of operations or a process to, to, to fulfill. Giving you another example from the HR perspective, the onboarding piece, ensuring that we send the offer letter and that we set up payroll and that all the pieces uh, that have to be done get done. And this is also a great place where you can leverage Asana's dependencies functions, which allows you to ensure that a task is not completed until a prior task or another task or multiple prior tasks are completed before that task becomes available uh, for completion. And so these are different uh, le different ways to leverage Asana uh, from a uh, standard operating procedure perspective or just any process in general, as opposed to uh, a list of, of, of tasks that has to be completed. And I'll give you another example here. This is a compliance report. I know that's a piece that kind of ties back to our, our financial resources. A lot of times we have uh, annual reports that we have to fulfill that not only tie into our strategic planning for the year, but our financial allocations, right? As well as disseminating information to our benefit benefactors, our beneficiaries, and any of our uh, boards, advisory boards, trustee boards, um, any of those pieces that tie into budget as well all have um, sections here that we would look at to ensure that we've gone through and we can facilitate in a very consistent way our um, annual prospectus, right? Our compliance report that we send out. This would allow us to fulfill, uh, create the content, actually build out the documents, uh, as well as ensure that we've disseminated them and pull for feedback and figure out best practices to evaluate for how do we do this differently in the future. So another example of maximizing our resources here. And so the last one I'll touch on uh, comes when it, when it comes to um, performance as, as maximizing ourselves and not just the resources around us. And so one of the pieces that, that we, we find is, is that there's uh, oftentimes reviews right? Not just from an individual perspective, but from an organizational perspective. How do we ensure that we are achieving what we set out to do as an organization uh, in total when it comes to our mission and our mission statement, or as an individual when it comes to my individual performance or my individual responsibilities and KPIs? So how do we leverage Asana to track that so that when we get to that annual report, I, I, I would love to know how many of you have experienced this in a corporate world or even within your organizations where you get to that point of feedback with a supervisor or with um, uh, a team member and you're, you're, you're conflicted or you don't concur on what the actual goals were. Well, you didn't say that that was part of my job description or I didn't realize that that was the actual organizational goal. Right. Um, having a place to be able to, to 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 codify those pieces or to simply be able to track your performance on a particular individual goal are, uh, is another uh, capability that you can leverage in Asana. And so I'll point out to you two more two more projects here before I turn it back over. And so these two projects are formatted in the form of, or defaulted in their form to the board view. And they operate you know, no differently in the board view than they do in the list view. But this one is called our annual goals by quarter. So this is where we look at as an organization, are we doing what we set out to do? And can we measure and track that progress toward uh, our, our goals and objectives throughout the year, or whether that's quantitatively as a measurement when it comes to um, a, a goal of, of tracking donors or tracking expenses or tracking our um, uh, progress toward fundraising goals even. So 
if we look at as we look at this uh, first example, we have the sections broken down by quarter. And so what we're looking to do is, is both one, as we migrate throughout the year, have the ability to, to progress these goals throughout the, uh, the quarterly sections that are listed. But in addition, we have nested within this first example to develop new relationships with potential, potential donors. We can see our, our individual subtasks here and go directly into those subtasks or our objectives and see how is it that we plan on accomplishing these new relationships with potential donors. A first example is, is a measurable goal. We want to complete six discovery calls per week, right? And so from there, I can bring up multiple fields that are placed here and, and measure that goal, either quantitatively or qualitatively. Are we tracking, uh, are we meeting the expectation on that goal? Are we exceeding the expectation of that goal? Do we need to ramp up and catch up on that goal? Or maybe it's quantitative and we can say, hey, it was out of six and we're at 20% or let's adjust that now. We've achieved you know, um, a higher percentage of that and we can track that as we go. No one has to send out a, an email to communicate where we are. Any of us that have visibility to this board can constantly go back or we can utilize the reporting function or the dashboard function within Asana to give us a, a, a quick glance even uh, that allows us as, as, as um, as people who are over an organization, executive directors, uh, board members, to be able to see and, and have visibility to those granular details without feeling like we're micromanaging and asking for emails, every email responses, or um, being, you know, our employees or our partners feeling like they're being tracked and, and micromanaged. So these are a couple of different examples. Going again, the second one, attending 80% of our local philanthropic events. Right, so these are different functions that we set out to achieve our um, high level goal. In this case, we had three goals for the year and we're gonna progress those goals across the quarters and measure ourselves until we um, can validate that we've achieved those. So cold outreach uh, for, for our leads every month is a third example. And I'll touch on this last project here before we open it up. And this is our individual performance board. So very similar to what we talked about in terms of tracking uh, goals and, and, and performance and your, your key performance indicators uh, as an organization, we're looking at this one here as an individual performance, whether um, <laughs> when it comes to character or professional development or whether it's just your, your actual role within the, the company's uh, objectives or mission objectives for the organization. And so here we have both. And this is kind of like what will replace, uh, in my past experience, we would have used this to replace that um, my managerial booklet where I have everyone's, <laughs> everyone's annual review for all the things we set out to do, whether it's uh, one, two, three, four, or five star performance, or whether it's needs improvement, or is it is meeting expectations, or whether it's fully detailed out in a full description. We have the ability to, to, to manage all of that either with fields or with the, uh, the description portion of an individual task. And so here in this case, we've got the individual assessment where we've shown uh, developing new relationships with potential donors, uh, honing our account management skills. And so I'll, I'll tap into this one as a great example. Our home, our honing uh, account management skills, yes, that is our assessment goal. That's what we've been set for our personal development, our professional development to achieve. But within that, there are measurables. How are we going to actually track um, with, with uh, detail what the achievable goals are, the set expectations for this individual performance? And in this case, we've given you three examples here. We're completing a LinkedIn learning course that has to be achieved in this, you know, before uh, the annual review uh, that you've got 80% or above in your customer satisfaction rating, 80% of donor relationships retained. These are some examples of how you can leverage um, tasks and subtasks within this board to um, ensure that we, we have a clear expectation of performance uh, across an individual's uh, professional or uh, personal development. And then similarly to, we, to what we had in the uh, organizational goals board, the sample role here 
I've got one on this side where you you can break down the actual campaign uh, 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 mission objective for the organization and identify for that individual what their role is or what objectives they are responsible for uh, when it comes to the organization as a whole achieving this objective, whether it's for the year or for the quarter or whether it's just um, for a show, right? So we 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 uh, encountered this with a client who uh, does performances throughout the year and wanting to to measure for each of their three uh, performances through the year, who is responsible for what and what what is what? How are we determining who should be doing what based on our performance in those responsibilities? Being able to clearly lay those out on a board gives people an opportunity to go back to see and, and self regulate and manage their own agendas and their own responsibilities with in the organization. So just a couple of different examples here of, of being able to uh, break down and utilize not only the different views within Asana, but maximizing the ability to take projects and tasks and subtasks and sections, all the pieces in that original um, uh, slide and leverage those for more than just project management within Asana. As I mentioned to you, we've encountered all of these examples and so many more, which we don't have time for in this uh, presentation, purely by building and growing with our, our partners, people who've looked at and leveraged the Asana setup service to get a jump start on, in, uh, uh, on maximizing Asana. So they don't end up in that 5% sliver, or as Bobby mentioned, you know, they've signed up for Asana, they've checked Asana out, but before the trial is over, they don't have anything to show for and haven't leveraged it to the point that they really want to use it uh, for their entire organization. We found that synergizing as much of your uh, processes, your um, team, and your essentially your tasks and your your must dos into Asana um, makes it the most capable tool for your organization. It helps reduce uh, communication errors when it comes to sending emails and uh, Slack integrations. There are all kinds of tools that can be brought in uh, when it comes to processes, um, documents, shared collaborative documents can be attached, forms as we mentioned before. Um, the one thing I wanna highlight before I let you go is I skipped it and that is being able to utilize the form. So one example is that a form, not any, not uh, unlike what you might experience with a Google form or a type form of that nature, it gives you the ability to create um, fill-ins, whether that's a single select fill-in, a multiple select, or a text box. And those um, forms that you create, when they're submitted, they are tied to a particular project, and each form submission will show as an individual as an individual task. So one example, as I bring you back to the contacts, is putting a form from uh, Asana onto your website as a contact form. That would allow someone to fill out this, th this exact same information on a web form. And every time that web form is submitted, we would automatically uh, have a new contact listed with their email, their phone number, their role. And it would show up in this, um, in this contact project. That project having a new contact can be tied to a notification, pieces that can come in and, and, and um, uh, stimulate the next portion of your process can be tied to automation. The search and um, automatically uh, assign that to a to an account manager, all different ways to leverage um, the different features for Asana to maximize something like a CRM as well. So uh, before I go too far over my time, I'm gonna turn it back over to Bobby. so We can talk about a little bit more about the Asana setup service. He's still muted. <laughs> Thank you for that. Today has definitely been a, a technical <laughs> glitchy kind of day. Uh, but no, thank you so much, Raymond, for the demonstration. I think, um, you know, a lot of what you share kind of illustrates exactly what we started talking about, right? Where we're looking at different ways to kind of turn what Asana gives us, turn it on its head and find different application, applications and use cases for uh, the tool. Got a lot of questions in the Q&A section uh, about the grant management calendar uh, template. Uh, there were some who wanted to uh, 
raise the stakes and go after Asana, asking them to create one and put it in there as a standard functionality. For those who did not see the response to the question, that grant management calendar is not an Asana template. That is one of our templates that we deploy to, to customers that sign up for the Asana setup service. So I want to take maybe a minute or two. If you have questions um, that haven't been answered, things that you want us to show you that we haven't covered, um, would love to please drop your questions in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. Raymond, one of the things that um, that came through the Q&A that I would love for you to maybe demonstrate for us quickly, um, there was a question around templates, the use of templates. Um, several questions around, hey, do we need to replicate this if for the SOP use case, for example? Do we need to replicate this for every iteration, so on and so forth? Can you, if not demonstrate, can you at least talk through how templates are leveraged in Asana and then the relationship between templates and teams? Yes. Uh, you asked me to do anything quickly, probably not, but I'm going to give it a shot. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> so let me see if I can regain control and usurp the throne for a second. Everybody can see me here. So let me get my Q&A out the way. And I'll give you a quick example here. So yes, we'll do So this is the project that we looked at for uh, a charitable giving drive, essentially, you know, so this is fundraising, but not the uh, not the entitlement form. <laughs> so this is the generosity form where we we gain access to, to financial or any other type of resource, any physical resources, um, but we gain them from people giving their generosity. So this may be something you could use for a gala or a uh, an art sale or something of that nature, where the process may be the same, but you're going to utilize the same uh, process of identifying the cause, designating resources, assigning people, dispatching those resources across the organization, tracking your outcomes, tracking how much you bring in, uh, evaluating that process. But this is something that, uh, even if it's uh, got the framework, may have to be massaged specifically for a, a particular event. But if you make those changes and you utilize those changes, that may be something that you want to uh, redo again, that same way for the gala. But it also may be something that you don't want to uh, mess up for the art show, right? If you have a different process for doing either one of those. But either way, in either case, we're, when we talk about sustainability, part of that is being able to, to replicate something and do it well and do it um, multiple times the same way. And so one of the easiest ways to do that is to leverage the, the, the templates function. And templates operate just like you would expect them to do in Excel or in, in a Word document. It allows you to take this process or this set of tasks and replicate it and use it across multiple um, instances without having to recreate the wheel every time and set up every task and rename it and create the subtasks and the dependencies, as you can see, or the milestones. And that is accomplished simply by choosing in the project in the project uh, dropdown the save as a template. And I'll do it quickly for you, so hopefully it's not a blur, but that template can be renamed and you can rename it something as simple as charitable templates. <laughs> and uh, you choose the team with which, within which you want it to exist and how private, how much access within your organization you want it to have. I'll leave this so that everybody can use it, everyone can edit it. That is one of the, 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 the kind of the, the nuances here. A lot of times with our templates, we may set something out as a standard, as an SOP, right? Um, and anyone can use it and modify what they use, but we don't want anyone to touch this base template in the repository from a, a, a consistency perspective. So maybe we'll choose that. Anyone can use this template. And it's going to populate as it does line by line in Asana. It's going to take everything that we've created in that charitable document and bring it into a template. Simply put, that template is going to look exactly like the project. I've given it a name. All the details are there. I can also preset a description. 
right? That's gonna show up with every project that's made from this uh, template. And then lastly, I can even give a description of the template itself. Hey guys, use this template whenever we're creating a new art show or a new generosity-based campaign. And I can invite different individuals to, that pro uh, to this project template. I can even save it and add it to a portfolio of projects. So that piece is, is very simple and straightforward. And once I've created that template, it within this Asana service management team, there is the project section, which has all our active projects. But then down here at the bottom for templates, you'll see that now amongst our templates, I have a new template to, 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 to draw from. And if I just want to create a new project, I have the option of doing it from scratch or using a template. And from there, I can scroll through all my available templates, got budgets, campaigns, and here's the charitable template that we just created. Creating a new a new project from it is simple and easy for the art show. And as it creates and populates that project, I now have a separate independent project that's going to be populated and fulfilled with all the same sections and tasks. Uh, I can even pre-assign individuals to those tasks. Um, I can preset relative due dates that if I create this start date, two weeks out from is going to be the first task, a month out from the first task is going to be the second task, and those will get their uh, absolute dates based on when you create the project. You can either do it from the start date or like my, my art show or my uh, performance show client I mentioned before, they had a due date, you know, a show date, a go live date, and all the dates for the activities were, were um, uh, prior to that, five weeks out, two months out. Those are different uh, ways to maximize or utilize a, a template. So hopefully that's a shorter answer <laughs> to the question. And we'd love to dive deeper with any of you guys and have opportunity to, to serve you as well. Thank you, Raymond. Um, one question from the group. Uh, this may actually end up being the last one uh, as we only have about seven minutes. Um, can anyone create rules? If not, this is from Taylor Manning, sorry. Can anyone create rules? If not, can you describe those access levels slash permissions? So the, the, the permission level that you're describing is going to be relative to the project. And so as I've just created this project, I'll, I'll give that as an example. Here at the top right is where the, the members of this project are. So as a project admin, I can modify uh, significantly this project creating rules, changing the name of it, kicking people off the project, right? All those different pieces I can do as an admin. Um, any of the other collaborators, like if I added Bobby <laughs> to, you know, to this project, I can add him as not an admin, a person who can edit this and make changes to certain tasks and certain aspects of the project, or just someone who can um, uh, utilize this, right? He can view it, but can't add comments or edit the project, right? So there are different levels of access that I can I can provide to an individual. And based on that, the ability to customize this project is provided to an admin versus not provided to a viewer or a commenter. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does, uh, but those rules are created by the admin or admins. And you can set that admin privilege to an individual, or you can create a team or a group and provide the entire team or group that admin privilege as a, as a group itself. Awesome, thank you, Raymond. Um, if, or if we can, let's take one more quick question. We got two minutes on the clock and then I'll share with everyone resources for uh, next steps. The question is, uh, Asana forms, can they be filled out by anyone, meaning are they public, or do uh, does the respondent need to create an Asana account? So the forms exist as HTML. So not unlike what you would experience with a, a Google form, or as I mentioned before, a type form or a you know, survey monthly, right? Uh, the, the form then has code and you can either um, put that on a web page or you can direct them directly to that page. You have the ability to require an email to be placed in, but if the, if the specific question is, do they have to be a member of your organization within Asana? The answer is no. Do they have to have a, an account with Asana at all? The answer is no. 
right? So that that can be restricted, um, but you you don't have that as a limitation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Raymond. Um, if I can take over the screen share really quickly before we, we close out here. Thank you, sir. Um, so we've covered a lot of ground today, and I'm sure that more questions will will come to mind as you all kind of consider, you know, how Asana can be a benefit to your organization or how you may be able to take advantage of some of the use cases that we identified. And just know that this is only a handful. There are many more um, to really maximize efficiency and effectiveness within your orgs. Um, for those who have asked around, you know, how do we get more information? Where do we find out, find out more details? Uh, first and foremost, if you want to reach out via email with any additional questions, We'd be happy to uh, answer them. Uh, any ones that we weren't able to cover in today's session, the email is contact at bobbystaten.com. Uh, for those who have a cell phone nearby, uh, grab it quickly and scan this QR code. This is a direct link to the Asana setup service uh, page on the TechSoup website. So for those who are interested in deploying the grant management calendar uh, template and any other of the examples that we've shown today, that, we've, that we have developed internally, this is the service that you would need to purchase in order for us to be able to deploy those to your respective instances. So please scan the QR code um, if, if you're interested in that. And then just as a note, um, if you're looking for more services beyond just setting up your Asana instance and you're really looking to build out your project management back office um, and ensure that the projects and the programs that you all are rolling out are optimized and, and functioning you know, at a great and high level, we are available for service by way of TechSoup's Consultant Connection as well. Um, on behalf of the rest of the team, I want to thank you all uh, for your time, for your questions, for your energy, for your input and insights. Um, and we would love the opportunity to serve you all. We hope that this information has been beneficial to you. Thank you so much for your time.